Glory to God. What another beautiful and awesome day today. To always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day to always give him the thanks. Another day to always give him the praise. Another day to always give him the glory. Today is the day that the Lord has made. And I am so glad, so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it. I want to say my brothers and my sisters, it is such a blessing today to be in the house of the Lord. It is such a blessing today to fellowship with every last one of y'all. And I believe today that God is going to talk to somebody today. He's going to soften somebody's heart. He's going to talk to somebody's heart today. He's going to get somebody attention today. And I want to welcome all my brothers and sisters to the Lord Take Over Ministries. I am Servant Minister LT, and God is going to do a new thing through every last one of us today. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father God, we come before you peacefully and humbly right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, Father God, for a chance of a lifetime. We thank you, Father God, for this word that we're about to receive. We thank you, Father God, for this powerful message today. God is going to keep us full and is going to keep us satisfied today. We thank you, Father God, for who you are, what you have done, and what you're about to do in our life, God. We thank you, Father God, that we can always come to you for everything. We thank you, Father God, that we can talk to you about every anything that's on our mind, God. And, Father God, as long as we have time to pray to you, God, Father God, you always have time to listen. And God, we just want to lift you up today in your house. We want to praise you today in your house. We want to glorify your name in your house today, Father God. Over heaven, Father God, there's no place that we'd rather be at today, Jesus, but in your house, seeking you, praising you, worshiping you, and glorifying your holy name. Oh, Father God, we thank you, Father God, for the blessings that come. We thank you, Father God, for the breakthrough. We thank you, Father God, for the miracles. We thank you, Father God, for the double portion. We thank you, Father God, for the more than enough. We thank you, Father God, because you will open up the, the flood the flood gates of heaven, God, and pour the blessing on your sons and your daughters who seek you with their whole heart, God. And God, you know exactly what your sons and your daughters are going through, God. You know the hard times and the hardship that we are facing today, God. And God, we know that you're a healer. We know that you're a deliverer. God, we know that you're going to come through. Father God, we know that you're going to make a way out of no way. Father God, we know that you're going to provide. Father God, we know there's no way, God, that you allow, allow us to wait for some God that was not part of your will, God. If you are allowing it, God, it's all for your purpose, God. So, God, even though we might not understand what's going on, Jesus, we're still seeking you in a way. We're still praising you in a way. We're still holding on to your unchangeable hands right now today, God. And, God, we're just so thankful, God. Allow your presence to move through this place. Allow your love to move and spread through this place right now, God. Oh, God, just let your presence be known through this place right now today, God. Father God, I'm asking you for a favor today, God, to do a new thing and move through my brothers and my sisters today. Holy Spirit. I'm asking you to move through this place. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move to my sisters and my brothers today. Let them catch the Holy Ghost fire today. Oh, God, we thank you for the day, God. We thank you for this opportunity. And, Father God, we're here today to let you know that we are available for praise, that we are available for service, that we are available for the kingdom, that we are available to serve you, honor you, and magnify you. And, Father God, it's like praise is an everyday thing. Repentance is an everyday thing. And, Father God, we come before you today in your holy, precious, mighty name. Please forgive me, all my sisters and brothers, for every anything that we've done wrong in the sight of your eyes today. Father God, please forgive us, God, for every anything, God, that we had in our heart that was not part of you. Father God, please forgive me, my sisters, and my brothers for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our mind that was not part of your Father's will. Please forgive us. Wash us clean. Purify us through your blood right now and wash us as white as snow. And Father God, before I get started, I'm here today to let you know I can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart out to you every day, Jesus, because I can't 
can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. 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 I can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. In your holy, precious, mighty name. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. But let Jesus know right now that you can't thank him, that you can't thank them enough. Amen? Amen. God is good all the time. And all the time. God is good. And he is so worthy, so worthy to be praised. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Today, I want to talk to my brothers and my sisters. If that's okay. And I want to talk to y'all about what God has put in my spirit this bright and early morning today. And he knows that someone has made a big mistake. Someone has made a big, huge boo-boo. And right now they are regretting their mistake they made towards you. They are regretting it right now. They don't know how you're going to take it. They don't know if you're ever going to reject them. They don't know if you're ever going to look at them the same. They don't know if you're ever going to accept them back in your life. They regret the mistake they made towards you. It could be a husband. It could be a wife. It could be your children. It could, some, it could be a close friend. It could be a family member. It could be a church member. It's someone that you know dearly. It's someone that you know that was close to you. Yeah, they betrayed you. They deceived you. They lied to you. They were dishonest towards you. They was not loyal to you like you was loyal to them. You kept it real with them, but they didn't keep it real with you. And you told them, no matter what you do to me or try to do to me, it's never going to work. It's never going to prosper. They laughed in your face. They made fun of you, told everybody that that they, that you can't make it without them, told everybody that that they they going on with their life. They thought the grass was green on the other side. They thought they found someone else better than you. They left the eighty percent to go chase down the twenty percent, not knowing that twenty percent they had nothing going on. And they regretting their mistake. He left their marital home because they had a lot of people in their ear, in their head, in their ear. Not knowing they was going to have to pay the price for what they done. Not knowing the celebration was meant for them and not for you. Right now, day by day, they sit back wondering how life could have been with you. They sit back wondering on the mistakes they made and how can they make it right? How can they how can they come to you on a level here and say, I'm sorry. I wish I would have never done it. They've been looking for you. They've been waiting on you. But in, the, in this time, you're not in the rush. You're not even in a hurry to go see them. You don't know I'm in a lonely night. They don't stay up crying and wondering. Pulling their hair out now eating stressed out. Because of the mistake they made. And they're regretting it. It's eating them up right now. It's eating them up right now. We know they done wrong. They know they done wrong. But they hard, my sisters. They hard, my brothers. Know what they really want. But they don't know if you want their heart back again. They don't know if you're ever going to accept them again. They know that you might not trust them. They know they don't know they can ever get that old thing back. But I'm here today to let somebody know they're going to try. They're going to do whatever it is, do whatever they can to get back with you. They want to tell you today 
how deeply sorry they are. They want to tell you today, they regret the decision they made. They regret how they done you wrong. They regret how they, how they betrayed you. They regret how they lied to you. They regret how they cheated on you. They regret how they thought the grass was green on the other side. They regret for the wrong that they done to you, my sisters, my brothers. They regret it. They regret it. They regret it. I don't know who God is talking to today. I don't know who God is preaching to today, but God is talking to somebody hard today. Somebody know what God is saying right now. Somebody is going through this right now. Somebody is facing this right now. And they're regretting it. They know they've done wrong. They've been ducking and dodging you. But eventually, my brothers and my sisters, I don't know if they come to visit you or you're going to have to go visit them. But my brothers and my sisters, get ready. They know they done wrong, but their heart know what they really want. Get ready. They're going to hold you so tight. They're going to hug you. They might want to let go because they're going to be so excited to see you. They're going to be so excited for you to show up knowing that you came through. As brothers and sisters, the word of God always tells us to forgive them because they did not know what they was doing. And it's really our job to do that. And I know it's hard for you, my sisters. I know it's hard for my brothers because you probably say, but they have done this before. They have done it so many times. But this is the regret. It's different from the last time. This time they know that you ain't playing no games. But their heart knows what it wants. And their heart wants you, my sisters. Their heart wants you, my brothers. Amen? Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to Luke 22. And we're going to read verses 54 through 62. Luke 22, and we're going to read verses 54 through 62. Then we're going to finish off at John 21, verse 15. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. <clears throat> Luke 22, verses 54. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him to the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. But when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him. But he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, you also are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, certainly this fellow was with him, for he's a Galilean. Peter replied, man, I don't know what you are talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word that the Lord has spoken to him. Before the rooster crows, today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. That was the mistake that Peter made. Peter knew he was wrong for what he done. Jesus already warned him what was going to happen before it took place. Peter looked Jesus right in his face and said, I'm not going to do this. I got you back. Neither myself or you, my brothers and my sisters, can fool Jesus. Because he knows every last one of our situation. He knows our hearts. He knows our, intu our intuitions. He knows everything about us from head to toe. He, he knows the decision that we're going to make if it's not in him. He know the mistakes that we're going to make. 
And he know that mistakes that we make, we're going to regret. He know that we're going to do someone wrong. And the person that done wrong, that's going to be the person that they're going to need the most. Right now, they told you that they need you. They told you that you was nothing without them. They told you they was not in love with you no more. That they loved someone else. They had a lot of people. They had a lot of people chitter chatting all in their head and in their ear. They went on making dummy moves. They went on, on, on emotions. They went on feelings. Knowing it was going to cost them at the end. And before they made that decision, you best believe that Jesus spoke to them clearly and said, if you do this, you're going to regret it. If you do this, that's the wrong thing that you're ever going to do. But no, did they ever listen to Jesus? No. In the moment when they did what they did, when they thought the grass was looking so good, they realized that that grass was going to wither and the flowers were going to fade. They know the weapon that they formed against you. It was never going to work. It was never going to prosper. Because they had formed this weapon on you so many times and they ain't never worked before and they never prosper. But this time, this time, they realized they made the stupidest, dumbest mistake that they ever made towards you. And when things was not going their way, the word of God said, Peter went outside weeping bitterly. So if Peter went outside weeping bitterly, don't you think the same person that done you wrong, the same person that deceived you, the same person that lied to you, the same person that stole from you, the same person that cheated on you, the same person that done you wrong when things are not going right in their life, you best believe you don't know how many nights they stayed up crying thinking about the mistakes they made and they're regretting it day by day, wishing they can get one more chance with you. Wishing they can ever get you back. Wishing that what y'all ever be reunited again. They regretting it. Every day. It's on their mind every day. It's on their heart every day. It's in their spirit every day. Regretting. Wish what they was thinking when they did it. They regretting it right now. They are crying right now. They know they done wrong. They don't know how. They don't know how you're going to look at them. They don't know if you ever going to give them another chance. They don't even know they ever going to get another opportunity with you ever again. They don't know. But they know they done wrong. And this is the regret that they're making. The mistake they made. Peter made a mistake. And Peter had to regret that mistake that he made towards somebody who had they back. Jesus was loyal. He was faithful to Peter. He even chose him. But look how Peter did Jesus. He did him wrong, right? Yes. There's a lot of Peters out there has done us wrong. Some Peters who was walking with us. Some Peters who was sleeping with us. Some Peters who was rocking with us. Some Peters who we thought was faithful. Some Peters who we thought that we can trust. Some Peters who we thought that we could love. Some Peters who we thought that we had a life with, but they done us wrong. They done us wrong. Yes, they did. And we told them before it happened what was going to happen. But they looked at us and said not, it was never going to happen. But when it happened, something, hallelujah, something caught their attention. That's why they're regretting it right now. That's why they are weeping bitterly right now because something caught Peter's attention. And what, they, what caught Peter's attention is when Jesus turned around and looked straight at Peter and Jesus had to open his mouth. He had to open his mouth. He just, saw the, he just saw the facial expression on Jesus and he remembered everything that Jesus told him prior to what happened. 
And in his mind, the moment that he saw Jesus' face, Jesus was not shocked. Jesus would not cry. He just looked at him and said, I knew you was going to do this. I knew you was going to do this. And that person that done you wrong, they remember how loyal you, you was to them. They remember there was no one like you. They remember you was the only one who had their back. They remember you was the only one who was there for them when they was going through a rough patch. They remember there was no one like you before. And they remember that now. It's bothering them now. Because in their mind, they thinking, is someone that's going to get my chance? Is someone that's going to get my, going to get, take my spot when I had something good? So yes, it's bothering them right now. Yes, they're crying right now. Yes, they regret it right now. Yes, they know they done wrong. They know. But I'm going to tell you, my brothers, I'm going to tell you, my sisters, even though that brother done wrong, even though their sister done wrong, even though that their husband done wrong, their wife done wrong, their children done wrong, their family member done wrong, their heart knows what it want. It knows what it want. See, they was playing themselves by listening to other people. They played themselves because they allowed the enemy to trick them and to deceive them. And they realized there was nothing there. They realized there was only own. They realized they realized they couldn't make it or do it without you. Trust me, my brothers and my sisters. They don't have a long time to think about this. Because if they was doing good, if they was winning, they would not be worried about you right now. But they are thinking about you because things not work out the way how they thought it was going to work out. They plan didn't go his way as they thought it was going to work out and, and play out. That's what the word of God says. The grass withers and so does the flowers fade. The word of God tells us in Isaiah 54 verse 17. No weapon formed against you. No weapon. He said, I can't stop the weapon from forming. But he promised you it's never going to work. It's never going to promise. And that person who done you wrong, that person that made the biggest mistake in their life, they said, man, what was I doing? I planted something and I done wrong. They don't even know if they got to go through this regret for the rest of their life. They don't even know they're going to get a second chance with you or not. They don't know. They hurting every day. Thinking about it every day. Wondering if they ever going to find someone like you. Are you going to really accept them back into your life? Are you going to give them a second chance? It's what they're thinking about. Every day they're thinking about that. Every day that's on their mind. Every day they write that down in their book or they or they diary. They probably ask you a million times, come see me. And you told them I'm coming. But in their mind, they probably say, is he really coming? Is she really coming? After you don't told them, yeah, I'm coming. You probably don't told them the dates. But in their mind, they might say, you know what? He said he was coming. She say he, she's coming, but maybe they might do me the same way I did them. Maybe they're going to pay me back the same way I done them wrong. So, yes, they're thinking about that. They're regretting that. It's something that's eating them up day by day. They eat food, but the food is not sticking to them. It's going in, but it's going right on out. Because they know they done wrong, too. They done wrong to the wrong person. Peter done wrong to the wrong person. That's why he was crying. That's why he was hollering the way he was. That's why that brother was crying. That's why that sister was crying. That's why their wife was crying. That's why their husband was crying. That's why them friends was crying. That's why them your children was crying because they know who they done wrong to. They done wrong to the wrong person. 
and they regretting the mistake they made towards you. But their heart knows what they really want. And their heart wants you. I'm going to keep it real to you, my brothers. I'm going to keep it real to you, my sisters. Somehow, some way, they have had an intervention. Somehow, some way, God has talked to their heart, has softened their heart. Somehow, some way, God has even humbled them in a way that you might even know or realize. That's why they're coming back to your life. Because they know what their hearts want. Their heart thought they wanted this. But their heart can deceive you. The word of God tells us to not lean on our own thoughts because our hearts can be deceitful. God knows your true intention of your heart. He knows it. He created us. And how I know? I'm glad you asked me that. Let's turn our Bibles to John 21 and we're going to read verse 15 through 17. And if you have it, let the church say amen. John 21 and we're going to read verses 15 through 17. Amen. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Do mm -hmm. you see what I'm talking about? See, Jesus already knew Peter loved him. He just knew Peter did wrong. He just knew Peter made a mistake because Peter was still in that fleshly body. He knew that. He would never have chose Peter as a disciple if he didn't know that. Because Jesus represents love. And if you represent Jesus, you got to love that person that done you wrong. You got to love that person that made you mis made a mistake. Even though I know it's hard, my brothers. I know it's hard, my sisters. I ain't going to sit here and sugarcoat it and tell you that it's not hard. Because it is. I know that you're going to feel some type of way about that person. But if you are walking with Jesus and you are following with Jesus, that means that you, that you represent love all day, every day. Because look how many times that we have done wrong and made mistakes towards Jesus. Haven't he given us another chance? Haven't he, haven't he asked us, do you really love me? And he still loves us the same? So if he still loves us the same, even though we done wrong to him, even though we made mistakes towards him, we still got to share that same love toward that same Peter who done us wrong and who made that same mistake towards us. Amen? Amen. Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt. Mm. Why was Peter hurt? Because Jesus told him three times that you're going to deny me. And he remembered those three times. Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? Jesus already knew the first time that Peter loved him. Because why? Jesus knew the intention of his heart. Like Jesus told Peter the first time that you're going to disown me. He ain't had to tell him three times. He knew the first time Peter's going to do it. He knew the first time that Peter really loved him. Amen. Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all the things you know that I love you. They hard know what they want. They might be ashamed to tell you right now that they love you. They might be too embarrassed to tell you right now that they love you because they don't know how you're going to react towards them. They don't know if you're ever going to accept them. They don't know if you're ever going to give them a second chance. But Jesus told me to tell you, their heart knows what they want. And their hearts want you, my sisters. Their hearts want you, my brothers, even though they done wrong. Yes, they regret the mistakes they made. Peter, he regretted the mistakes that he made. But look how Jesus reinstated Peter. And Jesus telling me right now today, my brothers, that it's time for you to reinstate your wife back, your friend back, and your children back. Or whoever done you wrong, 
it's time for you to reinstate that person back in your life. My sisters, it's time for you to reinstate your husband back, your children back, or they're afraid they've done you wrong. It's time for you to reinstate, restate them, reinstate them back into your life. Because Jesus said, even though they've done wrong, their heart still wants you. And their heart don't lie. True love. Listen to the point I'm about to come up with. True love never return back void. That's why Jesus asked him that. True love, real love, never return back void. It's the point that I'm making to you today. And if you know God is talking to you, and this word is for you, give God some thanks and praise and glory in the house of the Lord. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. And I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying this simple little prayer, that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is with this .lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus, which he is the author and perfecter of your faith. Faith. Always continue to put your faith and your trust and hope in Jesus. Always continue to pick up your cross and follow Jesus. Always choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer and help and prayer changes things. I'm serving Minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name, amen.